Hey, can you imagine sitting there not knowing what you've done to somebody that is so dear to you? Now I'm sitting here guessing what have I done again? Hey, I'm always making something wrong. Every day is me, I beg you. Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi Mtuala, my name is Gamu. And to all my returning subscribers, hi Mtuala, welcome back to yet another video. Today we're doing a little bit of a sit down. It's been a while since I did these. So I asked a question on Instagram regarding a topic I've been meaning to talk about. And I'm glad we brought it up because I've been meaning to talk about it. I'm glad you brought it up because I've been dying to talk about it for a fucking hot minute. First of all, but before we get into the video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Click the notification bell so you can also get notified every time I upload an awesome video like this one. And let's get straight into the video. So today we're having Paul Kluver. I'm having the red Paul Kluver. This is Paul Kluver Vintage Pinot Noir. I've never had this red one. So I had a class over the weekend and I left it for the story time in particular. So please get your glasses, get your juice glass, get your tea, get your coffee. It is cold, so whatever floats your boat, okay? Oh, as for me, oh, I'm gonna turn up. <laughs> Cheers. Ping. Oh, and I just reviewed this hair, so you know we're not wasting any hair this side. We are not wasting hair any time this side again now. Hey. Okay, let's get into it. So we didn't drink off the chairs, damn. It is dry, so... Hmm, too nice. So the topic of conversation is silent treatment. Do you prefer silent treatment? How do you react to silent treatment? What is your feeling or what, what is your feel around the topic of silent treatment? Like how do you take silent treatment? Do you dish it out? Are you good at accepting it? Like what is what is the vibe there? So that's what I'm gonna be reacting to today. There's a party next door. I think I'm gonna go. Anyway. <laughs> first things first as per usual i'm not going to be naming people's names i'm just going to keep you anonymous i'm going to read it out and then we're going to all share right as she says the thing is i can't read the thing is i can't read your energy oh the thing is if i can't read your energy i'm going to act like you i know how to mimic a person and i hate it because it makes me toxic so does this mean if a person starts off by being like silent towards you like they give you silent treatment you're like, okay, cool. I'm just going to act how you act. So I'm going to give you what you give me. Basically, that's what you're saying. And then you say, you're saying you hate it because it makes you look toxic. So does this mean the person is toxic towards you? Do you have the conversation with the person to say, hmm, this way you're always silent, you know, when I've done something wrong or I don't know what causes it. Like, I don't know what is it that gets people to get to a point where they're like, I'm just going to be silent about things. Like, I'm just going to give you the cold shoulder. You will figure it out. You know what i'm saying but i feel like matching energies is sort of like hard work like it's so much admin to match somebody's energy i would just rather say i think remove yourself from the situation because me being silent with you because you're silent with me it's just like i don't want to be silent though you know what i'm saying i'm that one person who wants to find out what's happening like what did i say or do that's wrong let's get to the bottom of it because they're now Having to match your energy is so much work. It's so much admin. Let me know what I've done wrong. If you can't let me know what I've done wrong, then release me because what do you mean you're silent? Like, what must I do? <laughs> okay, she says, it's disrespectful. Adult communication. Vuga, skulume, skete, or slugani. What the hell? Vuga, skulume, skete, no mas slugani. That's a bit rough. I feel like a lot of people, re I, think, I think a lot of people react differently to certain situations. So sometimes people prefer to keep quiet rather than to say how they're feeling there and then, you know what I'm saying? Because remember some people can't control what comes out of their mouth when they're not happy. You know what I'm saying? So maybe someone is like, okay, I'm going to be silent because I don't know how to deal with the situation, but maybe later on they can speak. It obviously differs if it's someone who just goes silent and then they never really resolve it or you guys never really have a conversation about it. But I get you. Like, let's talk. Like, tell me what the issue is. Let me know where I've gone wrong. Let me fix what I've done wrong. Just like, let's talk. Like, I also feel like, let's, like, let's talk. Let's talk. You know, I get this. I really get this. I prefer being silent. I tend to say the most hurtful things when I'm emotional. Okay, we just, we just clucked it. We just clucked it. Some people really can't control what they say when they're mad. So they prefer being quiet. But I would say then I prefer you being quiet for, like, let's say this just happened now, right? Maybe it's been today, maybe tomorrow, maybe two days, maybe tops. You know what I'm saying? 
then like come back though like come back let's talk about it like let me know what i've done wrong like you can't just give me silent treatment till the end you know because sometimes some people receive it you see what the you see what the the previous person said they said oh it's very safe someone would be like you know what if you're gonna give me silent treatment for two days i'm done i'm out you understand what i'm saying you also can't dictate how the next person receives silent treatment as much as you're giving it maybe you're hoping for now that i'm giving her silent treatment she's gonna come back and try and find out what I, what they've done wrong so they can fix it now maybe she could be like no i'm waiting for you to tell me what you, what i've done wrong to you you can't expect me to come to you and ask you what have i done wrong you're an adult open your mouth and speak so i would say you know what? i get it i hear when you're saying you get mad and you don't control the things you say out of your mouth when you're mad so take some time off and like cool down once you've cooled down let's have a conversation but i don't know there's no telling with you how long should you take to cool down because i'm also not sure what has made you that mad that you're going to give me silent treatment or are you just the person whose personality is i don't address issues i just give you the silent treatment we keep it pushing okay you'll figure out what you did to me you're grown people know what they do because there's also that thing where people know what they're doing you never know actually for me it's emotional abuse i've experienced it because with my ex it was horrible it broke me oh yo you see this is the stuff i'm talking about like this sucks so much it sucks so so much especially when it comes to like partners like relationships like where someone just gives you the cold shoulder and my thing is my thing is always like if i don't know what i've done to you that's when it hurts the most you see if you tell me like you communicate with me because i also faced something like this with my partner when we started right like he would just go off and keep quiet you know and i'll be like okay you know like until one day until two days until three days i'm like no uh-uh no okay we're not doing that let me know what i have done then I'll, you know once i know what i've done i'll apologize and i'll tell you let me do right now then if you continue to maybe give me that silent treatment you know here and there you're a bit cold but maybe we're still talking then i get it like you're still taking time to accept my apology you're still finding it in your heart to accept my apology so we can move forward but if you don't tell me what i've done wrong and you just keep quiet the whole time like i'm walking around eggshells around you like i don't know what to do i don't know what to say and i'm someone that talks a lot i'm someone that likes to crack a joke here and there now i'm not sure should i crack a joke is that joke going to be fun even if the joke is funny is he going to laugh you know what i'm saying so i'm just like <laughs> so i'm just like what do i do like i hate feeling weird like i hate walking on eggshells around people i hate feeling like i don't know what to say i don't know where to like i hate it so much like, let me know what i've done let me apologize for it and sometimes it's not about being right or wrong it's just about meeting you know on common ground agreeing to disagree whatever the case is okay but open your mouth talk and let me know let me know what i've done wrong Okay, so most of them are the same. Like, also, she says, silent treatment is another form of emotional abuse. Let's communicate and come with a solution. That's it. You know, that's it. And sometimes you don't want solutions at that point in time. You just want someone to take accountability of their actions. So you don't want to hear solutions. You don't want to hear, I'm sorry. Because a lot of people also, guys, they run to say, I'm sorry. Why did you do that? I actually want to know, why did you do that? What made that okay for you to do? Is there something I'm doing that's making you do the things that you're doing? You know, guys, this could be a friendship. This could be a relationship. This could be at home. Like, why do you do that? Like, what is it that makes you think it's okay for you to do that thing that makes me unhappy or that thing that doesn't sit well with me? You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes a lot of people like to run to say, I'm sorry, before you've taken accountability and you've said, you've mentioned what you've done. I want to hear from you. Do you know what you've done? Now that I've told you what you've done, how it has affected me, which is the reason why I've been so silent. Do you know that you've done that to me? Are you aware of the implications? Are you aware of how much it hurt me? Now let's get into why did you do that? Why did you think it's okay for you to do that? Do you understand what I'm saying? Then we can start to hear. Like, I feel like it needs to be constructive. There needs to be accountability. We need to get into it. We need to dissect it. Let's sit down. Let's talk about it. Let me know what is tea. What is up? I, I, re I reciprocate when I know that I'm not wrong. Hmm. You see, I just mentioned this now. I think a lot of times, a lot of times the reason why a lot of things don't get resolved is because people are looking to be wrong or right. Wrong or right. I don't want to be wrong. I don't want to be right. I want to be heard. How about that? I want us to get to a the middle a point where we say you know what i see how this could have hurt you and i apologize you know um i i see that i see how this could have hurt you here's what i thought it, i would achieve by doing this here's what i thought it would do for you and i you know like like i said accountability mentioning the things that you've done and think mentioning what your thought process was when you were doing those things that you were doing you know so that we can meet at a mutual ground or at a common ground where nobody's wrong nobody's right at that point in time when i did what i did i thought it's you know okay for me to do you know sometimes it's for my own benefits it's my own selfish needs 
I couldn't consider you. I can see how this has affected you. I can see how this has hurt you. And I'm really sorry about that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not all the time where you need to seek to be wrong or to be right. Let's just meet at a common ground. Agree to disagree. You've got your point. I've got my point. If I've hurt you in any kind of way by making decisions that maybe affect me or benefit me, decisions that are more like most likely to hurt you, whatever the case is, I apologize. I just hope you hear where I was coming from. But I hear you. I see where I could have gone wrong, you know. But it's not to say there's never a point where someone is wrong or someone is right. Like, it's always either black or white. There's no gray. Do you get what I mean? I hear you. There are points or stages or something where someone is like, you're wrong, you're right. By the way, I've got my leg up. I'm sitting warm with the blanket. It is cold, okay? So just in case you see this, it's my knee. And I'm sitting with a blanket. Thanks. Okay, she says, I like to be left alone to feel my emotions, to diffuse the situation and to find my words. I guess it's the same as someone that says, I don't want to just open my mouth and express how I feel because I might say some hurtful things, which is something I like. You know, I like, I like it when someone knows themselves to that extent where you're like, I know that the things that's going to come out of my mouth and, you know, in the, the, in the, in the moment that this thing has just happened, like as, as I'm just experiencing this and I'm just feeling this, just as it happens, I don't want to open my mouth. I want to keep quiet because the things I might say are not going to be nice. I like that. I like the, the self-awareness. I like the self-consciousness. Like I like that a lot because you're able to apply maturity. You're not like those people that will be like, say anything that they're feeling at that point in time only to come back and say oh no but remember i said this because i was angry you know when you're angry say wrong things blah blah but you know how they make excuses for being nasty you know what i'm saying like how people make excuses for being nasty and saying nasty things being self-aware would see me when i'm mad i'm going to say the most nastiest things i think it's the highest form of maturity and i commend you for that that's that's commendable silent treatment should only really be used if you've tried to communicate and to no avail I feel like it's immature and it's a lack, it's a sign of lack of conflict resolution skills. Yes, a conflict resolution skill. I beg you, I beg you. But I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. I, I think I share the same sentiments as well. I completely agree with this as well. I feel like you need to get to a point where you're like, I need to communicate when I'm not happy. Like I said, for me, I think the most important thing is if you can always go back to saying, you know what, I've been silently treating this person. I've been like sort of neglect. I've, I've sort of like, been avoiding us having this conversation and therefore i've been avoiding this person but now i'm ready to talk about it because i've calmed down and i'm able to you know think and i'm able to utter correct words i don't i'm not gonna go there and hurt the person you know and stuff like that and then after that we can now find a way forward after we've addressed all those issues you know what i'm saying but to leave it for good like for example like you're mad at something i did or said you know and then you just decide to give me the silent treatment and you go on and on and on with your life like forever and ever and you're just quiet and then you're expecting me to like sort of break the ice because i'm somebody that can't go on like that like i can't be mad for that long like it has to pass at some point we're gonna have to pass it like but in order for refit i'm the one supposed to break the ice chelsea come on now chelsea come on now you know open your mouth speak let's talk about it let's address it tell me what i did wrong let me tell you what i thought what what i was doing and let's squash it and let's move forth you know okay she says silent treatment is also an answer and you will feel it when you're no longer a factor anymore so what does this mean i'm not sure if i get this correctly so you're saying say you're questioning what you've done right you don't know what you've done and this person has decided to silence themselves and sort of avoid you and move away from you so when you're no longer in their life you're like okay so this is what was supposed to happen this person was literally trying to separate away from me because remember, some people are just like, if you're quiet, I'm quiet, and we're going to drag it. We're going to play the silent games. You're quiet, I'm quiet, we'll see who's going to say hi first. We'll see who's going to break the ice first. If you don't break the ice, baby, I am breaking the ice too. Okay, we're going to keep quiet. If you're quiet, I'm quiet, we keep it pushing. Then from that distance, you're like, okay, so I was the issue. But you're not even willing to open your mouth and tell me what I did wrong. How did I affect you with anything I did or said? If that's what you mean, then I get that. I, I get that too. She says, I'm the master of it, but I'll be silent till I feel okay. Then I'll talk to you. Not going back to the topic. Okay, so you like to leave it unsaid. So you're going to go and talk to the person, but you're not going to talk about what is it that has hurt you. But then how do you expect them to fix their behavior? How do you expect them to fix what they said? Maybe it's something that they said or it's something that they did. How do you then expect them to fix that? Because remember, I feel like any conflict needs solution or resolution, right? So if there's something that's causing you to be silent, why are you not addressing it so that I know what I said or did so that we can move forward? I mean, if I, com if I continue, 
or if I still display the same behavioral patterns of whatever you have mentioned that doesn't sit well with you, that leads you to go the silent treatment route, then that simply means I don't respect you. I don't value you. You know what I'm saying? We need to reach a point where you're like, you know what? Here's what you did. Here's what you said that didn't sit well with me, which therefore led me to be sort of distant because I just felt like, why would you do this? You know, it's something if you tell me something once that I wasn't aware of, that I decided to work on it. But if you tell me something and you keep on repeating it, you keep on repeating it, I keep on doing it and I keep like, obviously, ofs, ofs, that person doesn't have your best interest at heart. Do you know what I'm saying? So I think this is not fair. This one, I feel like it's not fair. Let me know what I did. Let me know what I said. Let me fix it. If you don't matter, I won't fix it. I'll continue to do it. Eventually we're going to get tired of one another. We're gonna go our separate ways. Family, friends, romantic relationships, it applies. I think we're one of the toughest generations when it comes to this thing of also not being afraid to remove yourself from family situations. Like if an aunt is giving you a cold shoulder, an aunt is speaking badly about you, or speaking nasty to you, you're just like, I am not going to tolerate this. We're having way too many family functions, way too many things where we're always together as a family and you keep on displaying this energy, baby. I'm going to remove myself from your life. I will not talk to you when I see you, even at these family gatherings, it'll be hi, hi, bye. But I'm not going to subject myself to you because you trigger my emotions. So I I'm so happy we've reached this point as a generation to say, even a family member, I'm going to remove myself from you if I feel like you're being toxic. Okay, so she says, I make things clear to you what I want and what I don't want. If you keep doing what I don't like, then I move away. Okay, you see, this is what I spoke about. If someone has made it clear what they don't like for you to do, instead of them giving you silent treatment, they've communicated what they don't like. Then you continue to do it maybe the second time they'll be like but i spoke to you about this maybe that's when they start to you know give you excuse me start to give you that silent treatment now because babe like we've been speaking about the same thing how many times now i've been telling you the same thing how many times i don't like when you do this i don't like when you say this you're still doing it i don't know what you want me to do now you know then it's okay for you to remove yourself but my thing here my my, my argument here would always be don't remove like why would you remove yourself without telling me what i've done wrong like why don't you communicate with me so i know where i've done wrong so i can fix it you know what i'm saying if it's something i've done if it's something i've said let me know let's have a conversation like adults she says silent treatment is very valid because it's a form of reaction to how you feel about something then she goes on she says i go mute whenever i'm hurt so it's mostly about me than intentionally giving it but now i have emotional maturity i communicate that i need space and time absolutely absolutely at, you see that is the best way you can go about it because your guys silent treatment like i i share the same sentiments that it's abuse sitting there can you imagine sitting there not knowing what you've done to somebody that is so dear to you let us say this is a best friend of yours it's someone you get along with so badly like you guys get along you love one another you're always spending time together she decides to ghost you like she just goes silent on you you're sitting there wondering what have i done like what did i do what did i say what have I done? Now you're asking yourself, was it her birthday? No, her birthday is still coming. So it's not like I didn't even wish her a happy birthday. Let's think, who, who is special in her life who I didn't say happy birthday to? Her brothers. Maybe you, you know the brother's birthday. You know the sister's birthday. Her mom's birthday. Her like you're just try, you're sitting there wondering, what have I done? What have I done? What have I honestly done? Communicate with me. Let me know what I've done so that I know how to trade with you. Do you understand what I'm saying? That is why I'm saying... I'd rather you tell me that, you know what, Ne, this has hurt me, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, or A. Then maybe you want your reasons as to why I did it. Maybe you don't want the reasons. You just want space and time. Perfectly fine. Communicate that with me so that I know. So that I know that I'm giving you space to go and heal, think about it. Whatever the case is, because we're all flawed. I feel, you know, when someone gives me silent treatment, I just feel like, who do you think you are? On, on God's green earth, who do you think you are? Why do you do that? Guys, it used to trigger me so much. It used to hurt me so much. Ne? But I, I actually retracted from doing that because I felt like it's not the right way to go. You can't, like, I felt like it's a sort of emotional blackmail towards a person. Like I said, my boyfriend used to do this a lot. Back then, we were still, like, first starting off. Like, he used to do that a lot. And I used to be like to him, what if I go to work, then I don't come back? Like, I woke up in the morning, I spoke to you, and you just were, like, cold, and you just were, like, you know, snarks towards me. I don't even know what I've done. Now I go to work, we're not talking. You don't call me the whole day. You don't text to check on me. You don't do nothing. Which are the things you really do and we're fine. What if I don't come back home? Like, how are you gonna feel? And come back home, I mean, die. 
you're gonna come to my grave and start paying for forgiveness and start, start telling me what I did wrong when you have an opportunity while I'm still alive. I used to, like I used to say that to him, but then he asked, so we're not gonna have arguments and you're gonna have fights because I'm scared that you're gonna die. That is emotional torment. I'm like, no, but I just was asking because I'm just like, why is it that no matter how hurt I am, I can process it, you know, I can process it, go through my feelings, go through my emotions, then wait till I'm calmer. Then when I'm calm, I'm able to sit you down and say, here's what you've done that has affected me in a way which I feel like I'm sad and I'm hurt deeply. You know what I'm saying? I want you to reflect on your actions. I want you to reflect on what you've said and I want you to come back to me and let me know how you feel and what you think. That's where you need to reach. You need to reach a point where you're able to tell each other those kind of things. When you need space, I think I need some space to process what has happened because I'm not okay at the moment. And seeing you keeps on triggering me. So I feel like I just want to get to a point where I want to go through the emotions. I want to understand why you did what you did, why you said what you said. Then we can maybe come back and regroup, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. But you love this person. It's not like you don't know that you 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 know you're gonna come back. You know you're gonna resolve it. You know what I'm saying? And that's the thing. Master Nana, there's gonna be conflict. Whether in a relationship, a romantic or platonic, we're gonna have conflict. We're not gonna see eye to eye. You know. But it's these kind of things that actually measure. Are we moving forward in this, or is we a little move? Ten steps back. And I feel like silent treatment is one of the forms of ten steps back. I get that it's also a form of a reaction because you are reacting to something that you're feeling. But like, why not say what is it that's wrong? Because now you're leaving me questioning what exactly is it? Why can't we just touch on it, talk about it, keep it pushing? Now I'm sitting here guessing what have I done again? Hey, I'm always making something wrong. Every day is me. She says, I think if you've started the silent treatment, you need to explain. You need to sorry she says i think you start i think if you started the silent treatment you need to end it too by simply explaining and that is it simple as that sorry simple as that so explaining like explaining why you've been silent is that what you mean because then yeah i get that that's what i'm also saying Wuti. like once you've been silent you need to come back and tell me what is it that i've done wrong but for me just like you can't go three days without speaking to me you can't go four days like a day is enough like two days at max like if we're stretching it if we're stretching it two days at max okay i will give you that you can't go three days without speaking to me let's be so for real let's be so for real you want me out your life simple let me know i'll vibe because what do you mean three days without speaking to me Am I not supposed to be the love of your life? Are we not supposed to not be able to live without one another? Like, what do you mean? She says it's absolutely wrong. It could spark childhood trauma for others. Yes, I saw something. I saw something here. I'm going to try and read it. Here's the story. So she says, as a person who likes to take accountability and, in, and I'm also emotionally expressive, I don't prefer silent treatment because I feel like you're abusing me emotionally. Because, I mean, if I ask you about a certain issue, I want to take my L and understand your motive behind behind a certain behavior so that I won't do it again. And if I'm wrong, I want to explain and apologize for what for what was going through my mind. Did, did you hear what I said when I started? Exactly this. She says, for a person who has been abused emotionally by their mother, in a way that whether you tell them your goals or what you need Jay, they're just not there and people don't want to understand the neediness of a person doesn't mean i'm desperate honestly some things don't need money it's just love silent treatment is a trigger because what do you mean you don't know how to react or what to say do say do or say the thing so that we can talk about it and strike it so that it can come to an end you see what i said she says it's a trigger because it's something she had enjoyed at home from a parent you understand maybe now when a friend is silently cheating her when she's done something wrong it triggers that to say can't why can't people talk to me about things that i do to them it, like i remember this because my mom used to do this you understand what i'm saying i remember this because my dad used to do this it triggers it's like is am i the issue like am i really an issue in people's lives in the sense that they can't talk to me when i've done something wrong to them when I'm irritated, sometimes you find that someone, guys, it's not even you. It's their other issues. But, like, why is it me that's getting the backhand of everything? Why can't you tell me I'm not having a great day because at work this and this happened? For the next two days when you decide to be moody, I know that it's work-related. But I'm getting the backhand of things because I'm the closest thing to you. Let me be the punching bag. I will understand. If I say I love you, you're my friend, you're my partner, you're my brother, you're my sister, I will have to understand that you're not doing well. You're working in a toxic environment. You're always grumpy. That you hate the way you feel, and unfortunately, because we're in each other's spaces like that, I will be receiving the back end of it all. You come back home, and it's me. You take out your mood swings on. At least you've communicated that it's at work where I feel like I'm not happy, 
and therefore when i get home i want to relax i don't want to talk about it i don't want to talk to you i don't want to hey let me now decide what am i staying or am i leaving because am i really gonna be a punching bag babe like are you gonna are you really gonna be mad every night and then i get the back end of it no you know <laughs> let me decide on my own you know what i'm saying so yeah Okay, she says, I believe in silent treatment wholeheartedly. I take longer to process things. I'll have a response for you after two business days. <laughs> but for now, after the clunder you've just pulled, please get out of my face and let me be. I also take it well, because I'd rather have you talk to me when the truffles are no longer in the air. When the truffles are no longer in the air, so which means when you're no longer heated. I respect this. You see, I respect this. You're able to dish it. You're also able to take it. You understand and you're also stating that you just don't want to say wrong things and you end up regretting it so you need your space you need some time to cool off you need some time to heal i'm glad that you're still able to go back and what resolve it that's the most adult thing to do and that's the most mature thing to do but the thing for me is always communication like look i need my space and i need some time i'm not well and for now i really feel like let me be you know now your level of my level is a form of uh, emotional abuse because you're not saying everything in full you're just saying you need some time and some space from what what have i done tell me tell me because it's me you need space from it's me you need time away from but what have i done let me know but you can't let me know immediately or instantly because you're still also trying to figure out from your own perspective as to how am i going to deliver this to this person in a way that's gonna teach her not to do this again because also i feel like guys a lot of times people just like to tell you what you've done wrong what you haven't done wrong but it's not in a way to educate you so that you don't do this again it's in a way to sort of make you feel like i feel bad i feel like i feel like this person doesn't think i love them or i value them enough or i you know i care for them or something like that like tell me something in a way that's teachable to me so that i like i understand fully the depth of how it's made you feel how it's made you think, how it's made you, like let me in on how it made you feel in that point in time or in that moment where you decided you're gonna be silent about it, you know? Or when you decided, or when you realize that actually this has hurt me, what exactly, like let me in on the feelings and the emotions, let me know how exactly it has made you feel, how it exactly it impacted you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Let it be educational for me so that also, next time should i decide to think of even doing something of that nature i know exactly where that takes you i know exactly how that makes you feel let it be a teachable moment for both you and i you understand what i'm saying okay so for me when i'm upset or sad i really fail to say anything so i keep quiet i then result i then resort to silent treatment and i also want the person i'm giving it to to take it and let me be until i'm okay i'm the one who will come back to them okay when you come back to them do you expect them to be where you left them so let's say for example this has affected you so 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 much you take two months without speaking to them you give them silent treatment for two months after two months when you come back you still expect things to be normal or how long do you take when you say give you time time because give you some time because i feel like a lot of things obviously they're based on time someone would be like i can't wait for you for two months to not be speaking to me and you still call yourself my best friend that is impossible you're being silly you know what i'm saying a partner like your boyfriend is like babe what is it that's taking you so long for you to forgive something i've done or for you to be able to even talk about it what were you do? you know how they start to question you what have you been doing in this past two months did you want space because you wanted to go do other things then it starts a whole new different battle now you have to go and just like dig stuff it's just like oh my god like oh my god we could have resolved this in two business days at least <laughs> we could have really resolved this in two business days now we're starting to dig a whole new can of worms now it's starting to bring a lot of questions to the relationship a lot of questions to your loyalty a lot of questions to your faithfulness like it starts to bring a whole lot of things to the table whereas all of that could have been avoided you could have just decided to cool down you know and a lot of things i feel like as they start here if you've told yourself i'm that kind of person you're gonna be that kind of person but you can also train yourself to say you know what i know i'm a person who doesn't say nice things and i know i'm a person who likes to take my time to heal but let me try and work on speeding the process up because guys also another thing that life is teaching us i'm gonna go back to this topic but another thing that life is teaching us is life is short you know the, the very people that you think you can be mad at for three four months three four months in our global shop then they're gone then what you're sitting there now feeling guilt i know it's not a way to operate to say I, now i can't be mad at you because i'm scared you're gonna die no but like it's a reality it's the truth you know what i'm saying 
I obviously would have would, I'd be exaggerating it because I'd say to him if he's mad at me he's like for a day, you know, I'm just like, what if I die? I lock. Anywho. Alright, I'm gonna take two more along with Sun. She says silent treatment is a form of abuse. Reason being, when someone goes silent over an issue that had a negative impact on our emotions and overall relationship, I end up with unanswered questions that causes anxiety. You end up creating fantasies and delusions in your head. It also instills a sense of doubt. Had I not served this person well in this relationship, where have I gone wrong? How can I improve all of these questions? How can I improve all of these questions for someone who is silent? Hell no. Romantic relationship. Also, I have also been an instigator of such, but with people whom I have had time and time again beg to change, but I outgrew it by moving away from them. Family. Platonically. I honestly did not know how to regulate my emotions and therefore went silent towards others who did not deserve it. And this made my ex friends to somehow be afraid of me, tiptoe around me. I lost some real good ones, not gonna lie. I like this. I like this. And he says, relationships are not meant to be like that. We must be comfortable with talking to each other about everything. Oh, I love, I absolutely love this. I share the very same sentiments. I absolutely, absolutely love this. Especially when it comes to platonic relationships. I've also gone silent on people who I feel like, you know, I could have spoken to this person and we could have really resolved this like adults. But at that time, I just felt like there was nothing I could have said to them because also in my head, I hate this thing when they say people know what they've done but like do people really know what they've done sometimes i don't know what i've done like honestly sometimes i don't know what i've done even if you know even if you think that people know what they've done communicate with them so that they know that ex that's a, you know you know what you know what you've done right i hope you know that i also know what you've done so that we can get to a point where we you know we meet at a point somewhere my thing is always let's meet at a point somewhere we either agree to disagree or you take your l and you say you know what i was wrong in this instance and i'm gonna fix it by doing abc you know what i'm saying but like let's communicate you know and i linda i feel i feel the same way i've lost some really good people because i would keep quiet with something where i feel like I, you know what you did and you know what you're doing mm. and so acting like you don't know what you're doing just pisses me off because it makes me feel like you think i'm stupid and i always say i have a personal problem with you if you think i'm stupid so then that's when i decide i'm gonna keep quiet let you be clever you know she says in friendships i had a friend where we were close and we used to love each other dearly she started giving me silent treatment i reached out to find out if i did something wrong she then apologized and told me i did nothing wrong it got worse after she unfollowed me and she blocked me on whatsapp till today i'm still wondering what went wrong you see now this is very childish and it's very immature why did she then fix things with you initially when you picked up that she's been silent and she said you did nothing wrong you've clearly done something wrong to her which you don't know about sometimes you're not doing anything wrong it's just your existence that triggers people just you existing living life and being yourself maybe something about you just it's her something about you just impacts her guy something about she just there's something about you she hates and maybe she's always hated it now she's just she, she can't pretend anymore now her true colors have come out and she can't pretend anymore she's just like i'm gonna give her the silent treatment She's going to ask me what's wrong. I'm going to say nothing is wrong. Then we're going to keep it pushing. Then I'm going to be worse. Because why would you even, after I've asked you, have I done something wrong? We rekindle things. And then it even goes from bad to worse. This is someone who has a personal vendetta against you. She's always had it in for you. This is giving. She has always hated you. I'm sorry to use that word. But I feel like this is somebody who has always, who, who has always hated your guts. Who has always never really liked you. And she was just waiting for the moment. Oh, I don't know. She wasn't even waiting for the moment. She thought she could pretend all her life. She thought she could pretend all her life. And she just, it got to a point where she was just like, I actually, I, I can't, I can't stand this girl. I actually can't stand this girl, you know? And it, it, it showed, it played itself out. You didn't have to do much. It played itself out literally. But you need to thank God for stuff like this because you don't have to be going through things not knowing what is going on. The next thing you go visit her at her house, she's cooking, you eat, you fall sick, you don't know what's going on because you're that close to them. You know, this is dangerous because you're also that close with them or you were that close with them. So this should really be a blessing in disguise, you know. I'm glad you picked it up early, you adjusted and you thought you guys were good because you're like, this is my this is my girl, girl with girls. This is my person, I'm their person. We're gonna keep it pushing. But after having rekindled things, they went from bad to worse. I'm so glad you discovered it sooner than later. So I'm happy for you in this instance. I'm glad that silent treatment worked in your favor. In this instance, silently treat me, babe. 
in this instance silently cheat me i've had an encounter of this nature as well with somebody where somebody like started to give me silent treatment and when i asked them what's wrong they said i never make time for them i was like do you make time for me and they said no i'm like so what is this why can't we just fix it and work on it she's like okay let's do that and then when we tried to do that i don't know it just it just went from that to them speaking like god when i'm like how are you how's your day going do you care i'm like hey well, babe like <laughs> you are you're so mad like you're so mad it's like no i just wonder do you really care like every time i speak to them and it's like i'm just like it's just a simple question like hi friend how are you doing like how's your day going do you care Let's call my just yesterday today do i care like just be glad okay be glad all right this has got to do with content creators so she says as much as as a sabi i feel the absence of a creator when they don't respond to our comments it just says you as a creator you have just been quiet but you want us to engage with your things we also need the love which concludes that silent treatment is just not a cool thing to me i think here you're having a little bit of an umbrella approach to a friend because i just feel like Remember, some creators have a lot of comments, so it's not all the comments that they'll get to, but some will acknowledge the comments, so they'll like the comments, and then they won't be able to respond to all the comments. It's gotten to that with me as well, where I just, like, the, like there become so many, so many comments, I'm just like, I will like all of them, I will not skip, I'll like all of them, then I will respond to the ones I can respond to, because sometimes I try that immediately after I upload, then I respond to the comments immediately, you know. But if I upload, then I get on with my day. When I come back, it's just, you it's a lot. And I'm just like, I hope I've responded to everybody, but I try my best to respond to as many comments as I possibly can. So you can see I'm also very much engaging, you know. But I will try my best. I will like all of them. So I think you can extend some grace here to say, they're probably receiving a whole lot of comments. It's difficult for them to get through to all the comments. You must see people like your, your auntie T, Tandim Zamo, all these comments. It's like 500 comments. I'm just like, whoa, 500 comments? How do you get through all of that? I know I wouldn't be able to. <laughs> and it's not by purpose. So it's not on purpose. You know what I'm saying? Unless it's like those, because there are creators who like blatantly ignore comments. I know of some of them. And for me, I like to comment on people's stuff, but... I've sort of taken a step back a little bit because I'm just like, it hurts. Maybe like, I've been commenting on all your vlogs and you say nothing to me. You don't even like the comment. Now that sucks. You see me, I like, just a like. Liking the comment, it goes a long way for me. Trust me. It means you read the comment. You, you know, even if you didn't read, sometimes people just click like, 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 like they didn't even read. That's fine. Like, let me be Delulu and think you read it. But not reading it at all, not saying anything. I'm going to stop commenting. There are people that I still watch that I don't comment on their things because I'm just like, you ignored it. Like three times I've commented, you've ignored it. I'm sorry. I'm sure I've done that to some of you and that's how you feel about me. Perfectly fine. You know, perfectly fine. I'm the person, I, if I dish out something to you, I'm more than happy to take it back. You know, if I give you silent treatment, give me silent treatment back. Because I, I ultimately treat you how I want you to treat me. There's no way that I'm treating you in a way where if you treat me this way, I'm going to start going hammer on you because that makes me toxic. If I'm able to dish it and I'm not, if I'm able to dish it out and I'm not able to take it, that makes me toxic. And I don't want to be a toxic person. Believe you me, I don't want to be a toxic person. You know what I'm saying? Like God is working on me. There's a whole lot of things that he's doing on me. I don't want to be a toxic person. That's the last thing I want to be. So if I'm giving you something, if I'm doing something to you, best believe that it's okay if you give it back to me. I will take it as badly as it might hurt, as tough as it might be, give it back to me. And if you say, this is exactly how you make me feel. This is exactly how you treat me. I'll be like, okay. We have come to the end of this video. I hope you did enjoy this reactions video. Let me know some of your silent treatment dilemmas. Have you gone through a phase where you were silently cheated? Are you a silent cheater? Can you dish it? Can you take it? Or are you that person that dishes it but can't take it? What is your take on this topic? If you've got some more to share, feel free to do that in the comment section. I hope you did enjoy this video. Also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Click the notification bell so you can get notified every time I upload an awesome video like this one. And I will see you guys on my next video. Bye!